<laughs> oh, welcome back to Ringworm. It's time for a new building project in which I use only a chainsaw, no purchased lumber, no planning, really no thinking of any kind. I live out here year round in a tent, one of several tents, and I do it because I love it. However, when it gets to be in the single digits or below, it's really not that comfortable. So I'm gonna start a new building project. I get out the chainsaw, cut some trees, clear an area, mill up all my lumber with the chainsaw mill, and I'm gonna to throw together, none of the stuff I build out here, I, I can think of a real proper name for, because it, it doesn't really doesn't really fit into a proper group. I'm gonna call this a mini cabin slash man cave slash maybe a tool room. This is the first structure I put up uh, when my buddy and I first came out here. Uh, it was a February, a couple of years ago. And it was, we threw it up because it was the quickest thing we could build. It's just a simple pole frame with a couple of tarps over it. And eventually uh, chainsaw milled up some lumber, put a door and a front and a back on it. However, this, this thing's great in the summer. In the spring and fall, and it rains, and clearly the floor gets kind of wet and everything gets a little damp in here. So I need a replacement for this. And I want to build something with a lot of shelves in it, workbench, and just storage for a lot of this stuff. I don't know if I'll, I don't think I'm going to put a real uh, wood burning heater. I don't really like wood burning out here because all I have is uh, cedar. That's horrible firewood, but you know, maybe a little uh, a buddy heater or some kind of propane. And just like the uh, deer castle that most of you guys know, I'll probably put a flip down bunk like that one has. You know, the little heater turned on low in there will at least give you another 20 degrees or something. And if it's 30 degrees in there, I'd sleep like a baby. So I got this little open spot here that was perhaps going to have a previous use, but now it's uh, available. I already cut a couple trees. So as you guys know, I like to use uh, cedar stumps for the foundation of stuff. I don't bring uh, concrete out here, cement poor footings or anything like that so i think the first thing i gotta do is get rid of some of these extra trees i also have uh you guys might have seen in a re recent video uh some solar panels and because this is going to be a tool room and i only use battery powered tools out here because i don't have electricity i think it'd be cool to have a set of solar panels on there to charge all that stuff and whatever little electronic stuff i want to use in there i'd be able to use so i learned with my uh tent platform here my buddy and i cut down all the trees around to make space for it and went around and cut any of the trees that were obviously bad. I've recently found a couple of the trees that are hollow. They look perfectly healthy and they're hollow and they're a danger to that uh, platform. So I'm gonna go around here first and check all the trees. I'm gonna cut down anything within 20 or 30 feet and anything that looks dangerous or if it's right nearby and it's good uh, milling wood, I'll take those down too. Just like to clear this whole area out a little bit, partly for the safety of the structure and partly because I want to be able to get more sun in here for the solar panel. So luckily I have a uh, chipper now, so I don't have to burn all of the branches from these trees, which is just a monumental job when you're doing this all by yourself. There's absolutely no telling how this is going to come out because I don't really have a plan other than I want a little tool room. Might be my uh, rails for my mill are 12 feet long. So I'll probably just make this like 10 by 10 or somewhere around there. Usually I'll mill up, you know, find the right logs, probably some pine that I'll use for the frame, the frame for the floor and whatever those logs end up being, that's just the size of the floor I'll do. So if it's like a nine and a half foot log happens to be, I can get out of the tree and I've already got it milled up. It'll be a nine and a half by something. If it's 11 and a half, it'll be 11 and a half. I don't really care. As you can tell, I don't, I don't like planning stuff. And if it bothers any of you to see somebody build this way without a plan, I probably wouldn't watch this. On the other hand, if you want to see somebody having a delightfully fun time in the woods with chainsaws, watch on. See now here, all these trees look quite healthy. Pretty much the same. There you go. Sounds different, huh? Those are hollow. Which happens a lot of times, especially down low, it starts rotting from the middle up. So the top half of that might, tree might be great, and the bottom half is probably solid on the outside and rotten on the inside. So I don't want these around my, my cabin. That one doesn't sound great either, does it? I know this one isn't. 
it's healthy, it should sound like a like a baseball bat. That one doesn't sound great either. Well, there you go. Go check these others over here. There you go. That's a good one. <laughs> this is the one that happens to be all bent up and leaning the other way so it can stay. Jeez, oh Pete's man. Look at those, they even have the same split up there. They look almost identical. Any of the stuff that's a decent size to save for firewood, I'll stack up. Get all the little bits and pieces go in there. And then uh, all the branches, you can see it's two, two trees right there laid on top of each other. Not that many branches in those two, those will just go through the chipper. Well, winter is on its way. Uh, I started that clip and the camera died because it's too cold out here. This is what the inside of these look like. I sometimes look up at trees like this and think, I do not want to cut that thing down. That is a beautiful tree. And then you tap on the outside and you go, oh, it's not really much of a tree. <laughs> and then you get inside of it. This is good wood here. I don't know if you could tell on the camera. And that's good wood there. But this is all soft so you know i can leave it up there who knows it might even last a while longer it might be up there for another 10 years but there's a good chance that since it was leaning this way one of these days while i'm sitting here warming my toes by the uh little bitty heater uh this thing comes down on the roof so just got to take them down my guess is this will probably go up about 10 feet or so so hopefully hopefully man look at these old woodpecker holes old and new can see all the way inside there but hopefully by the time we get up to here they'll, i'll get at least one good saw log out of it Got to take this guy down too, and he's got some weird bends like all different ways. I'm really hoping I can get it down without crushing my tent. And uh, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. I think I can do it as long as so many of these just have rotten insides. You know, you get started, get it uh, cut halfway through and realize there's nothing. There's no holding wood left, but just for the fun of it, let's see if we can hit the bowling pins with it.
wonder if I could, uh, maybe, maybe I can hide the camera back behind this tree and aim it at the bowling pins. Maybe I should go pro, what do you think? Bowling, I mean, not tree cutting. Yeah, that one was uh, reasonably solid, but you can see my concern. If this was any bigger, this came out here. Sometimes they do, sometimes like the whole thing is fairly rotten, but <clears throat> I had about two thirds of the holding wood there to hinge on, and this was nothing, so. It can get a, can get a little bit sketchy if it's not leaning the right way. Uh -huh. I thought this was going to be a monster lot of uh, wood, but it's rotten most of the way. I don't know. I don't know if you call that rotten. It's got a bad spot. Started at the stump and continued all the way up through into that log. And I think by the end it's about gone, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to haul it over there because I could still mill out. You know, a few boards out of here. Probably use these for something. A couple boards there, whatever. We're getting there. We're making progress. One or two more. And then I could go probably cut that massive pine down that's dead on the top. Mill it up. Start putting the floor together. This is going to be really fun. Well, we got some unexpected uh, snow this morning and day before yesterday had a major windstorm. We got a lot of trees down and I was planning on today going over and cutting this giant pine that I uh, have earmarked to build this, basically this whole thing. And there are like four or five trees that came down all around it. So instead of cutting a massive tree down on a pile of trees, I would just never get it all sorted out. Uh, I gotta spend probably a couple days cleaning all that up. Just drag the chipper down there, take the saws, see what I can get out of there, grind some stuff up, burn some stuff, and then maybe take that tree down. It also, that's right on the top of my shooting range and it just uh, happened to wipe out the whole end of the shooting range, all the targets and everything. I'll show you. Let's see this area here. A couple down there. I guess that's an old one. Over here, a bunch more. And this is the tree we're going after right here. But now there's this mess. <sighs> we'll get back to you when it's done. 
be so lucky to be able to skip through this. Just bzzz. see all that mess back there. God, it never works. All right, got it all cleared out here for the most part. Everything but this uh, old log laying down there is too full of bullets to bother uh, <laughs> cutting into it because this is where I shoot into this hillside from down there. So I'm going to try to land it right here. The only thing I don't really like about cutting this tree is at the very top, all those uh, dead branches. I don't know if you can see them there sticking out. There are quite a few dead ones. I think they're pretty well sheltered underneath these other branches. They're still alive, but I'm going to try to cut it in such a way that those branches wouldn't land on me. A lot of times if you go pounding wedges into the back of it, just that impact on the tree can shake some loose. Sucker's making me sweat. Where once I was cold, whew, no longer. get scared I'd leave you a little bit too close if it uh, if it had been two feet to the left it would have just touched the foot of the tripod <laughs> that was close here's the top of the tree these grade pieces were the very tippy top and there's the tripod <laughs> wow that was that was perfect so that was uh pretty textbook, at least ringworm textbook. I don't know, there's probably some way somebody would tell me there's a way to do it better, but went through about a quarter and then uh, back cut about two thirds or so and a pretty straight strip of uh, hinge wood there. It just would not go. And it's because I thought as I was pounding and pounding and pounding, couldn't get it to go over. The only thing I could think is that it's really, really good wood. And so many of these trees are rotten in the center maybe not the the pines like this but man that is that is some good wood that's uh should be enough wood to uh make a mini cabin i was just gonna cut this down and then it's getting man the temperature is really dropping i think it's supposed to be like low 20s tonight I'm starting to get a little chilled but now that i've done some chopping i'm warmed up i think i'm at least gonna limb this up probably got a half an hour till dark so yeah let's chop a few limbs getting up to where the uh, dead part is, somewhere like right around here. I don't know if you can tell what that looks like, but that's just solid, solid sap resin. Oh, so good. This would be interesting to measure here to there. I bet that's 40 to 50 feet of a uh, lot of saw logs. See if you can see how long this guy is. And still up here, it's uh, 15 inches probably. It's so great to be out here. It's getting chilly, winter's coming, which I bitch about a lot, but I actually really enjoy the winter out here. Cutting stuff up, building stuff, all the lovely smells, and I got a good book in my ears. Today I'm listening to uh, Malcolm Gladwell's David and Goliath. So far it's fantastic. Whew. Got up early, got about like four this morning, waited till the sun came up. And I finished cleaning all that up. It's just the log sitting there. Trouble now is 
I'd like to mill it at the top of that hill. And as soon as I cut one, any one piece off, it's gonna roll down the hill. So I'll have to figure something out to keep it, uh, keep it from rolling down there. I don't really wanna sit on a hill or in that ditch and try to mill. And of course those logs are way too big for my four wheeler to drag around. But we'll figure that out in due time. I'm just looking at this. So before this is, you guys know, I don't like to plan anything. I, I, what I enjoy about doing this is just figuring out it as I, as I go, doing it on the fly. I can't tell you exactly why I do it that way other than I think it's really fun. It's kind of a hoot to go to do it as you go. And now that I'm looking at these, I do have to now do a tiny, tiny bit of planning because I have to figure out how, how, like what size to cut those logs. So I'm going to use that, uh, start with that stuff, use it to frame the floor, I guess. Pine seems like a good choice for that. I'm thinking I'll deck the floor with, uh, as or, uh, yes, with aspen. I've got a, uh, from a previous video, I think you guys saw, I started to build something. Oh, it was the hanging garage. I was going to use aspen for the roof. And it just was going to be way too heavy. And since I was actually hanging the roof from the trees, I decided against that, but I still have several logs of that sitting over there. That's way plenty enough to deck anything I want to do. Now I'm looking at these. I was thinking I was going to use these two stumps for two corners of the floor and kind of go out that way. Again, with my milling setup, I can only go out to like... 11 and a half, maybe 12. So like 11 by 11 would be fine. Nine by nine would be fine. I'm just gonna see how, how far apart these stumps are and see what might work. So that's 13, there's no way I could do that. And these are the ones I was thinking of. Oh, so that's like uh, a few inches short of 10 feet. So actually I think I will use these so I'll probably cut those logs, those logs at 10 and a half feet. I don't think any of the rest of these are really going to work. Oh no, I smell burning pizza. I was so excited for this. Use my little pizza pan to reheat stuff on the fire and looks like I uh, overdid it a little bit. Man, that sucks. Well, I'll eat the topping off of that and uh, I got one more piece to throw in there and then we'll figure that stuff out. a big pain in the butt. I have to keep stopping and starting my podcast. I don't like it. Listening to Armchair Expert and it's a good interview. Not sure uh, what we're going to get out of this log here. I mean the wood's pretty good but we're still up around that dead part, some big woodpecker holes. And I see, I think this was the big branch got caught underneath and there's a pretty big crack along here, but we got some good boards out of it. Not wasting an inch of a log that big, not a chance.
Man, that is so gnarly. So much sap jammed in there. I just cleaned this one too. Oh my gosh, there's enough sap. I almost don't need screws. <laughs> You guys know I hate melons sitting on the ground not doing this on a sawhorse, but it's the only way I could do it. Luckily, I have a lot of wood chips and pine needles chopped up, so I'm going to make it comfy. It gets comfy after like the second board because there's enough sawdust here, but oh, won't that be nice? That'll be something. One down, two, three more to go. I think I got about 30. So this is about a 40 foot log. And it would, there were a couple spots in this, the widest spots that the bar stuck through less than two inches. So maybe the next one will be all right. I'll probably have to go through and trim off the sides of some of the, some of the log a little bit just to get it to fit through there. But we'll see, apparently we got an impromptu snowstorm for the next couple hours that wasn't on the radar. So cover it up, come back tomorrow. Well, I decided before I cut another log, start milling it up, I'm gonna drag this over there, rip the edges and see, you know, stuff like this. Clearly I'm not ripping down, that down the middle and getting two boards out of it. You know, at that end, maybe I could, and I think with most of those, I will be able to get uh, two floor joists out of it. But like this, I can't, and until I rip the edges off, I really can't tell for sure how wide any of these are going to be i think i'm going to need like i don't know eight eight boards or something yeah even this isn't really wide enough to make two out of so i'm going to load them on the trailer drag them over there rip the edges off with a chainsaw and uh, see how many we got because i only have uh 28 feet of this log i mean this tree just looks so massive before i cut it that i'm like oh yeah i just use that and build the whole damn thing but i'm hoping i can frame the floor the walls and maybe maybe the roof maybe the rafters with that i don't know if i'll get all of that out of it and then like i said i use aspen for the floor maybe even aspen for the ceiling and cedar for the walls but until the edge until i get the edges of these boards ripped off <laughs> everything that touches this stuff is going to be a mess 
this thing is covered all of the bark. I threw some pieces in the uh, fire last night. Actually, the first cut of the log, the rounded bark part, I threw in the fire and just like burst into flames. Yeah, I'm like sticking to the trailer. Glad to uh, get this one done with. I was just put my clothes on and I was sitting by the little propane heater for a second and it smells like getting attacked by a horde of pine trees. It's so strong. I think I melted all the sap that was in the sawdust just melted onto my pants. <laughs> Haven't broken the trailer yet. That is a lot of weight. I wonder how many hundreds of pounds that is. A couple, several. This thing's kind of a beast though. Uh, I know a lot of people have asked about it. It's Utrex. I don't really know anything about the company. I got it uh, a year ago to replace a trailer that was no good out here. And because so many people asked, I did put a, a link in the description of the video. So it's spendy. I thought it was spendy, but uh, Uncle Sam bought it for me with stimulus money. So it's worked out great. All right, let's see if we can get him over there. Guess I might as well try to level these out before I go any further. Perfect. Well, this is the part that hurts my brain doing this. For me, it's the hardest part is figuring out what size to make the lumber from now because I don't want to waste anything. So this I could get six inches out of it here. This is clearly junk. And if you follow it all the way down and you take your six, in six inches out of here, then what are you going to do with all this? Burn it? <laughs> so I'm trying to figure with the stack of lumber I've got here uh, what the most efficient way is to use it. I mean, I'd like to get floor joists out of this and then uh, whatever's left over at least get a two by four so three and a half inches wide hopefully at least seven or eight feet long so I can use it to frame the walls it seriously hurts my brain especially since not every one of these boards is the same you could create a lot of waste doing this if I just ripped them every one of these boards down to a two by six and threw the rest away that'd be the easy way to do it if I had unlimited lumber and a sawmill and stuff I might even then I wouldn't want to do it I hate waste so I think the best way to not waste a bunch of lumber here is going to be making two by sixes and then figuring out how to make that work for the floor. 
And then these huge extra pieces, I'm just going to throw in a pile and wait and cut out whatever I need later instead of going ahead and chopping them into two by fours or whatever now and then not needing all those. It's quite a puzzle. All right, got to grab another log here, mill it up. I think I only got four or five boards out of that, but uh, that will also be a lot of two by fours because uh, most of it wasn't just, I mean, that, that log, unlike all the rest of these, really tapered down at the end. So I'm gonna try to get one more log out here, mill it up. As it sits, I'm really not sure why this hasn't rolled down the hill. I'm guessing there must be some broken off big fat branches that are impaled into the ground because there's it's not sitting against anything. I mean, it would be, yeah, even this is just just brush. And I really, really don't want this whole thing. If it rolls down here, I can't move it, and I'd have to somehow mill sitting on all this crap, which would be not very much fun. I'm going to assume that this end of the log isn't going to roll. I can't tell you exactly why. I think this end had more uh, big branches on it. And from about here down, there were, there were not many branches to speak of, so... I think I'm going to hook this end up to the four-wheeler, wrap it again with the winch cable, cut this out. Now, this is the log I'm going to mill, and I'll just hope it'll stay there. I mean, it, it can't go any further than this tree. It'll leave like 18 feet of that, the biggest part of the log there. So, <laughs> And the hill's steep, so I don't, know if, uh, I don't know if the little wheeler winch can pull it up the hill, but we're going to find out. Oh, that's the one with the limb stuck in the ground. Holy cow. Nope. Oh, I can see the limb too over there at the very bottom of the log. Well, ain't this going to be a trick? Especially since I can't get the winch cable underneath here. You know what? If I don't conclude this video right now, you're not getting one this week. So come back next week. Hopefully by then I'll have this log moved, milled up, get some of the floor put together. Days are so short now that it's like a very limited number of hours that I can get out here and work each day, even though I do this seven days a week. I try to do it seven days a week if the weather permits, and right now it's not uh, permitting a whole lot, but this is certainly better than uh, whipping wind and dumping snow, which is coming. It's on its way. Come back and see me next week. Thanks for watching.